Thanks for staying with us. To road safety now, the Federal Road Safety Corps says over 1.3 million people die annually by road accidents. The Ember Mounts Road Safety Campaign flag off is the FRSC's way of educating and enlightening road users on the need to ensure safety. We're in the Ember Mounts again. And to reduce the road carnage associated with the period, the FRSC is sensitizing road users, particularly drivers, on safety measures. Maintain safe speed, avoid night travel, and enjoy quality road experience. That's the campaign theme. Here in Adamawa, the commander assured the sister agencies of working hand in hand. The goal is towards Operation Zero Tolerance of reckless driving in the state and in the country at large. The sector commanders disclosed that the federal road safety is always working tirelessly in creating necessary awareness for the masses. This moment is more often characterized with road traffic crashes, resulting to loss of lives, human lives and injuries to many innocent road users. Consequently, this year's theme of the, of the Ember Month campaign is maintain safe speed, avoid night travels, and enjoy quality road experience. It's in line with the corporate strategy goals of the Federal Road Safety Corps for the year 2021, which is targeted at minimizing road traffic crash by 15% and fatality by 20%. The Adamawa state governor was represented by the Commissioner for Transport, Mustafa Jika. He said the state government was working closely with the FRSC to curb the menace. He assured the general public of creating more roads in the state that would ease vehicle movement. That would reduce the rate of accident in the state capital and beyond. This phrase, the command strategically in the state, has witnessed reduction in traffic, in road traffic crash with attendance, high awareness on the proper use on the highway due to increased patrol and enforcement activities by the personnel of the car. Hopefully, these efforts from the FRSC will translate to more sensitivity from our drivers and more safety on our roads. Drivers and other road users should complement the efforts of the court towards ensuring safety by abiding by traffic rules and regulations. Moving on, as part of their corporate social responsibility, men of the Nigerian Navy have arrested two armed traffic robbers at Navy Town Ojo, local government area of Lagos State. They renovated a uh, nursery and primary school in Lagos. They pledge to be more dedicated and vigilant, taking due consonance of the adverse impact of security challenges on national development and economic growth. These are the two suspects arrested at the Lakijur Axis in Ojo local government area of Lagos. They specialize in robbing residents of their valuables using dangerous weapons and motorbikes. The Navy officials arrested them in collaboration with other security agencies as part of efforts to reduce crime and criminality to the barest minimum. Commodore Michael Ayabina, Commander, Nigerian Navy Shipway, throws more light. We have men at Alakija and Kirikri, armed men controlling traffic and also trying to ensure that they apprehend criminals around them. Apart from that, we also have vehicular patrols that patrols Kirikiri and Alakija. With those uh, logistics on ground, we can or we are going to continue to apprehend these criminals. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Navy also officially commissioned the newly renovated Lagos State Model Nursery and Primary School at Chakbu Ajegunle to the delight of the pupils, teachers, and school authority. Representative of the Flag Officer Commanding Jason Bassa, Commodore Bassi Duke, speaks on this invaluable project. The Nigerian Navy has come a little way, thought it wise and in accordance with the two of the now staff president guide to 2021 05, under the leadership of Vice Admiral and one Zuberu Gambo, to carry out corporate social responsibility at the Lagos State Modern Nursery and Primary School. 
Thus, the Nigerian Navy Authority has mandated its establishment and units to impact their immediate environment and communities. We are gathered here to witness the unveiling of the above completed project made possible by the NOVA command in order to provide a conducive learning environment for our pupils in their pursuit of academic excellence. These events form part of activities that strengthen the Navy's civil-military relations with its host community. Destiny Marmo for Plus TV Africa. This one is on food loss and waste. Most people do not realize how much food they throw away every day from uneaten leftovers to spoiled produce. Food wastage is a global concern as it contributes to climate change. It's more so in Nigeria where transportation challenges and poor storage facilities ensure that about 40% of food produced in farms are lost. Ngozi Kauhai Jesse followed this report. For the second time, the International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste has been observed on September the 29th. Globally, roughly one third of food produced for human consumption every year is lost and wasted. That's about 1.3 billion tons. And in Nigeria, more than 40% of food production is lost and wasted, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization. <laughs> I'm here at the Mile 12 International Market in Lagos to find out how food dealers are coping with loss. A market board member, Gidadu Mohammed, explains how they reduce waste. We offload them. Um, the moment our trucks came here, after offloading the tomatoes, first of all, what we would do, we used to go, we used to check one after the other of the basket to see if there is any rotis of tomato amount inside. We sort it out and remove it and we'll take it to the coal room to preservation. The traders at the market all agree that bad roads and the difficulty in transporting food is the major cause of loss in Nigeria. Important challenges we are facing here in the, our business is roads. Because you load one trailer of tomato from uh, Kanu or Kaduna, before it's come to the market here, it will take like three to four days. Number one, bad roads. Along the way, when the motor is coming, there are some spots on the road. They will slow down. From there, I know the weather that we have now, we're in rainy season. And the other one doesn't like water. But the vice chairman of the Lagos chapter of All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Femi OK, lists other causes of wastage, including poor preservation facilities. There's no stable, stable life of where we cook our foods. Silos too is, is they are there. The silos are meant for grains, reservations of food. How many are functioning? Look at our roads too, that leads to our farm. Very many of our roads are not in, they are in bad situation. This year, food loss and waste are bigger issues in Nigeria than they've ever been due to food shortage caused by insecurity in many parts of the country. In the north, Farmers are being killed by bandits, while everywhere else, farmers complain of the eating up of their crops by nomadic cattle. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika, Ohio, HSC. And finally, 20 fashion designers who took part in the U.S. State Department's International Visitors Leadership Program have been honored by the Consulate General in Lagos. The goal of the IVLP is to provide first-hand knowledge about the U.S. society, culture, and politics while cultivating lasting professional relationships. These fashion designers are beneficiaries of the International Visitors Leadership Program, a U.S. Department of State Professional Exchange Program. Today, the 20th of them are being celebrated by U.S. Consulate General in Lagos, following the completion of the IVLP. In the place of the typical trip to the United States, they took part in a virtual fellowship for three weeks, connecting with their counterparts outside Nigeria and enriching their knowledge of entrepreneurship, business development, and innovation. The goal of this particular project was to connect Nigerian fashion designers to representatives of the U.S. fashion industry for mentoring 
and connections, giving them skills and knowledge to increase their sales and build their brand. But networking is key, and so let me encourage all of our IVLPs, please keep up with your contacts. Please, you know, hound them to the degree you need to, because we want you to take full advantage of this program. The more we use our, our whatever we have, the more we use it, the better for us. We will develop and we will take care of all those people, all those who are without jobs. The U.S. Consul General took time to admire the participants' designs and gave them their IVRP certificates. This program has really given me confidence to be proud of, of the product that is coming from my state. Because this fabric you see here, the Asho K that we have here, is actually made in the states. So that is one of the ways we contribute to the economy of Nigeria. This is a raffia skirt uh, made with the traditional um, raffia weaving method. We, just, we basically use a traditional loom in making this. So this, this is my own way of preserving the, the African art. Paris Oluashe, a male fashion designer, while relaying his experience in the program, believed fashion should not be dominated by women. We just want men to look beautiful because the narrative around men has been that men are really not fashionable. When you talk about fashion, you think about women. But we are occupying this space to change the narrative. The thrust here is that Nigeria can take advantage of global economic dynamics by providing a more suitable environment for fashion businesses to thrive. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. Please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obiugo. Thanks for watching.